Have you guys ever wanted to build a gaming PC for $200? Probably not, because usually you guys can't build a gaming PC for that low of a price. But for today's very special video, we built an entire gaming PC for $200-ish. So the special thing about this PC is really the case, and that is how we were able to build a PC with these specs for only $200. You might be wondering, what is the case? And if you watch my channel, you guys already know, but it's basically the cardboard slash like foam board PC case that we built for a whopping $5 at the Dollar Tree. And I thought there'd be no better way to use this PC case than for YouTube videos, because basically we can make really, really cheap PCs with this case and still make them look really good. Because if you guys didn't know already, this, this case looks nice. I'm telling you. From far away, it looks like a really nice RGB case. But when you get up close, you can tell that it, it's literally foam board, but they don't have to know that guys, and they won't. Like, it looks like a real PC case. So anyways, let's go ahead and look into the specs and what I was able to put in this PC. And yes, this is like the $200 PC. We will be doing a cheaper one later on. So at the very center of our PC, we have the Xeon E3. 1225 and it's still at its base clock i didn't even mess with overclocking because we don't have anything special in here and we really wanted to just test and see what the airflow is like in this case before we did anything crazy we got this for a whopping 25 dollars on ebay free shipping it just took forever anyways the graphics card is probably the next best thing and we got a gtx 750 ti by EVGA. We paid around $90 for this, which is a pretty good price. A lot of graphics cards are just absurdly high right now, so it's the best we could do for 90. For the motherboard, we have an Asus P8H61. We got this for $38. Wasn't anything amazing, but it worked. And if you guys are trying to cut costs, maybe contact the person you're buying from and see if they previously had Windows 10 installed. Because if they did, Windows 10 will be activated on your PC already and you won't have to pay the absurd price for Windows. So that is just one way that you can keep your cost very low for this build. All right, for RAM, I personally had some laying around, but I'm still gonna budget it in here. We're gonna say it's about $17. That is what I was able to find on eBay for eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. If you guys wanted to know, I'm running the ballistic RAM, so nothing crazy. It's kind of just your stereotypical DDR3 eight gigabyte RAM. For the SSD, we have 120 gigabytes of storage. It is literally just a random SSD and it works. We were able to get this one for about $15 off of the wonderful website called Facebook Marketplace. So for the power supply, we have a Cooler Master 500 watt. We were able to pick this up for $24 actually, which is a pretty sweet deal if I say so myself. And then lastly, the biggest expense of them all was the, the case, obviously at $5. So if I add all those up, we're at roughly $210 for that gaming PC that looks pretty sweet. So one thing that I did not include in this case are the fans. So you're able to get similar fans for about $15 on eBay. So if you guys want RGB fans, you're gonna have to spend a bit more. So maybe add another 15. While we're talking about like additional add-ons that aren't really necessary, I am gonna include the CPU cooler that I have on here that I paid around $15 for. Usually this is gonna come with your processor, but I wanted an RGB one so I could make a very epic thumbnail. So if you guys do wanna add a lot of RGB, you might be looking at closer to 260 versus the 210. But either way, with the price that we're at, even on the higher end, it's still way better than buying a used PC or trying to build one yourself with a normal case. Like a cheap case is gonna be at least $60, so we're cutting a big chunk of this build off just by making a weird foam case. And yes, it is safe, I, I made an entire video on the foam case, go ahead and check it out down below in the description or the card thing if that's still a thing on YouTube. It's a pretty interesting video, but make sure you guys finish this one first because we're gonna be seeing if this thing has decent airflow and what the temps are like. And I think for my next video, we're probably gonna be doing the $100 gaming PC and I'll be using the exact same case. So make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe if you guys wanna see the $100 gaming PC, yeah. Wish me luck. So overall, I would say the build turned out really good. It was a little odd not having something to actually like screw the screws into for the motherboard, but the foam board just kind of works. You just screw it straight into the foam board. You kind of just have to go with the flow for this thing because not all the equipment is gonna fit in here perfectly. So luckily your case is literally made out of foam. So you just cut what you need to get things to fit. I actually still have a power bun on this case, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. A lot of people that made cases like this just 
had to jump their PC every time, but we actually have an on and off button, which is pretty sweet. It is a very, very light case, and it's a little top heavy, especially while you're building it and you don't have a power supply in the bottom yet. But I will say I had zero issues hooking all this up. Like it booted up the first time, not one issue. I had no shorting and it just works. All right, so now let's talk about the efficiency of this super weird case. We're gonna be looking at the temps and then the overall performance of this PC. So after looking some things up, this CPU really shouldn't be running any higher than 72 degrees Celsius. So we'll see how that compares to what we get. So on average, what I was seeing was about 60 degrees Celsius while at max load on video games and including benchmark tests. On Cinebench, we never went over 60 degrees Celsius and we we're still able to get a score of 2,330. It's not the best score, but for the price of this PC, I say it's pretty good. So running the GTA benchmark, this CPU maxed out at 55 degrees Celsius, which was even lower than the Cinebench score. And from what I've seen from other people running the exact same benchmarks, this temp is actually a couple degrees lower than whatever other people are using. And I assume they aren't building a PC in a foam case. So I'm just gonna say they have like an average case with normal airflow and we are actually doing better than whatever they were doing. The airflow on this case is actually really good. The fans basically just run at full blast because they're all Molex powered, but the airflow is great. On the front, it looks a little weird just because I have that front panel hiding the fans to kind of give it that NZXT look, but it still has the cutouts on the side, top and bottom to let all the air in. And then we also have an exhaust fan that shoots a ton of air out. It does a great job. So the graphics card, whenever we ran GTA was actually at 35 degrees Celsius almost the entire time. And we did get up to 45 at the very end when it was a bit more difficult to actually run the game. But on average, we got 110 FPS on GTA on the benchmark. And that's all at medium settings running at 1080p, just like all the other benchmarks for this video. So Apex Legends got 80 FPS with basically the same settings as GTA. And then we went to Fortnite with basically the same exact settings again, and we were able to get 100 FPS on average. So anyways, that is the $200 gaming PC of 2021. Let me know what you guys think of this monstrosity back there in the comment section down below. I'd really enjoy hearing your feedback and what you guys would have done differently. And of course, I'll have all the specs of this down below just in case you guys missed anything. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next tech video.